On this week's weekly video fishing forecast, John Skinner shows off his top three lures for daytime fishing in the Northeast. Matt has his first beach report of the season, including news about Gilgo. We have a preview of the April magazine and our correspondents check in from around the island, all here at thefisherman.com. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. Today is Thursday, March 31st, and this is the Fisherman Magazine's weekly video fishing forecast. The April issue is out now, and in this issue, we have everything you need to know about the subscriber-only Dreamboat Contest. With the best time of the year being now for freshwater, I have an article about whether or not to use a fly rod or a spinning rod to target our ponds and streams. Springtime has some of the best topwater action, and Tony Durso's article has some great insights as well. This and much more in the April issue of the Fisherman Magazine. Let's start off with some upcoming events. On Saturday, April 2nd, it's Family Fishing Day at Belmont Lake State Park. Festival activities begin at 10 a.m. and it's free. Activities include open fishing, casting instruction, rod use, fish identification, fishing instruction, fly casting demonstration, and a fish cleaning station. The DEC and local fishing clubs will host informational displays and loaner rods, and free bait will be available to participants. The Fisherman Magazine will also be there as well and no freshwater permit is needed for this event. I hope by now you all have your beach permit for state parks. Today is the last day to get your 4x4 permit until September if you are new to driving on deep sand. The Long Island Beach Buggy Association is holding a free beach driving clinic. This will be held on Saturday, April 2nd at 9 a.m. at Robert Moses Field 2. Contact admin at liba.com for more information. And there's also more. On Saturday, there's another fishing flea market at the Camelot Hall, which is on the Farmingdale College campus. The show is from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. Then finally on Sunday, the Hempstead Harbor Anglers Fishing Club will have their fishing show in Seacliff from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Check out this video's description on YouTube for all the links. As always, visit thefisherman.com slash events. Wow, that's a lot of events. Let's see if we can hit them all. Well, we all know John Skinner from his popular YouTube channel, and we had a chance to catch up with him in Southwest Florida to find out his top three lures for daytime in the Northeast. You know, I actually only need two. Uh, I use two so heavily, and, and that's gonna be, a pen I mean, we're talking about daytime now. If this was only daytime, a pencil popper. The pencil popper, because this is a lure that will get stripers and other fish to hit when they're not going to hit much else and they'll also work in situations where you've got you know even uh, bright sun clear water calm water and the reason is if you think about why fish hit lures it's two reasons either they are good imitators or they do a very good uh, job of hiding what they really are. And the thing about a pencil popper is when you work it properly on the surface of the water and you're thrashing it back and forth, it is very difficult for a fish underneath to see that thrashing and be able to tell that it's a piece of plastic or a piece of wood other, you know, rather than a nice meal. So it's a lure that has the, the capability to pull big bass up from the rocks and it's that th slow thrashing on the surface that gets them to hit and then they can't figure out what it is and they'll eat it. The other thing is, it's a very, very good casting lure. It's, it's probably the best casting plug most anglers will have in their bag. This allows you to cover a lot of water, and that's important when you're searching for fish. And in the same way, um, as with any top water lure, you don't need to hook a fish to know they're there. Um, if you can just get a fish to rise on it, you'll get a boil. Just seeing that boil is enough to know fish are in the area, and that can be very valuable when you're looking for fish. All right, so that's the pencil. The bucktail, and you know, and I mentioned daytime, but the, you know, really, uh, daytime or night, it, you know, you, it's been said so many times, if you could only have one lure, what would it be? And, you know, many uh, good northeast anglers or anglers in general will say a bucktail. And you know, this happens to be uh, an s, s Skinner bucktail. The difference with these as compared to some others, you can see it's nice and bulky. There's a lot of hair. It's got hackle feathers that fill it out. Um, you know, I've got a soft plastic on here. 
Up north, I typically will use either an otter tail bait strip or a fat cow jig strip. Um, you know, what, what more can you say about a bucktail? You have to carry a bunch of different weights, uh, but that consider how deep you're fishing, how much current there is. I can tell you on the South Shore beaches, a lot of times I'm throwing like three quarters of an ounce, an ounce or so forth. In the inlets, you might go up to as much as four or five ounces, but it's the versatility. No matter what the conditions, it could be calm, it could be, you know, horrendously rough, fast currents, whatever. There's always a bucktail that will swim properly in those conditions, and it's that versatility and the fact that just about anything that is willing to hit an artificial will hit a bucktail. It, it just makes it such a powerful lure. So yeah, if I've got this and I've got this during the daytime, I'm in pretty good shape. Now, if I had to add one other thing, um, or maybe two, and this is where you start getting into the, so many other possibilities. Um, a lot of times when I'm throwing this, I might also have a large spook plug that I'd be throwing and also a consideration of something that casts farther than this. This is not the greatest casting lure. Maybe you want to have a tin in the bag for distance if you need it, but for the most part, these two do it for me. So with the first surf reports, we'll be starting up our weekly surf report map again. I got word that the western bays on the island on both the north and south shore are starting to see a trickle of stripers from schoolies to teen-sized fish. The waterways around the city are seeing stripers sw starting to feed as well. Small swimming plugs and swim sheds are accounting for most of the fish caught. Some of my friends to the east also let me know the tidal creeks are producing schoolies and white perch as well on small artificials. Also, for a quick beach update, Gilgo will reopen today the 31st after the placement of 800,000 cubic yards of sand on the beachfront. The sand was dredged from the Fire Island Inlet by the Army Corps of Engineers. Now let's check in with our correspondent starting out east in Montauk, Captain Timothy O'Rourke. Tim. Thank you, Matt. Well, greetings everybody from Montauk. The weather's definitely starting to come around. I'd like to first thank Paul McCain on a great fly fishing show that he put on in this past Saturday on the 26th. Paul really put his heart and soul into that. Um, it showed with every aspect to that um, fly fishing show. And there was a good turnout, plenty of people, and there was a lot of good vendors there as well. Um, this weekend at Montauk Brewing, I'll be doing my second Sage Fly Rod Demo Day. This will be Sunday, April 3rd from 2 to 4 at the baseball field in front of Montauk Brewing. I'll be uh, offering sage fly rods to demo cast. I'll be raffling off a real fly line, some real flies, and a couple other random prizes that I can put together. Um, if you show up, you get one free complimentary beer from Montauk Brewing. Um, they're releasing a bunch of new beers currently, so you get an option of trying some really good stuff. Um, in regards to the fishing out here, boats are really starting to get moving. People are starting to really start cleaning up their boats. I've been doing work on mine. I'm hoping to get that thing in the water shortly. Um, again, I'm going to X Flats Lodge in April 17th. So I'm looking forward to um, doing some good reports there. Maybe try to get an interview with uh, Jesse Colton, who's the owner of the lodge. Again, if you're uh, on the East End and you feel like casting some sage rods, come on by Montauk Brewing Sunday 2 to 4. Otherwise, Thank you, Matt. From Shinnecock, we have Mike Dean. Mike? Thanks, Matt. Hey, everyone. Still in that very early spring kind of pattern. Really just told over here is no migratory fish, but you know, with the warmer temperatures, even though we, uh, the warmer water temperatures, that is, even though we had this cold snap this week, we were a little uh, more willing last weekend to, to go after, um, you know, soft plastic, small lures, uh, no fish of any real size, but a decent amount of fish to the, to the west of us. So, you know, maybe another week, another two weeks. Um, big news, obviously, this Friday, blackfish season starts. It's only the 30-day season, but if a lot of people get in their boats in, it should be something fun to do if uh, the weather's going to cooperate this weekend to get out there. And, um, you know, while there may not be too many Tugzillas, definitely going to have a couple of keepers here and there and a lot of shorts. So that'll be something... Um, you know, that's, that's worth wetting a line for. So I think we're probably another like week or two, um, until, you know, the schoolies show up and in turn some of the bigger migratory fish. So that's exciting. Um, as Tim O'Rourke may have mentioned he, at, uh, Montauk Brewery this weekend, you can look up on, uh, Montauk Point Fly Fish on Instagram and on 
Facebook is going to have a, um, a casting demo. There's going to be raffles, free beer. So if you're out of Montauk, want to talk some fly fishing and give a couple of some new Sage and real products a try, that's definitely worth the ride out to Montauk for. So, all right, have a great weekend. I'll talk to you next week. Back to you, Matt. From Northport, we have Mark McGowan from Cow Harbor Bait and Tackle. Well, hello, folks. I'm getting ready in the shop this morning. Uh, it's going to be a busy day. Lots going on. Always custom rods being built. But uh, remember, this is the last week to get in on that $500 custom rod uh, raffle that we're going. Every time you spend 50 bucks at Cal Harbor on anything, service, work, whatever, it doesn't matter, you get a free raffle ticket. And that raffle ticket goes towards a $500 custom rod that I'm going to build. It could be anything. You, you take it, do whatever colors you want, and uh, and do the style of fishing that you'd like. Uh, this is a big week for fishing, in case you don't know. Do you know that maybe if you listened a bit in a science class, you might have learned something about salooner theory. Salooner theory basically means that uh, you're looking at the lunar transit, and the lunar transit is that time in which the moon phase, or the moon, and the opposing section under the under your local meridian which is basically like your location and there's a crossing it's called the lunar transit and the lunar transit has a lot to do with what's going to pull on the tides that's called the tidal coefficient and what does all this mean it means april 1st is going to be a new moon and uh and if you notice there's going to be really really good fishing great trout fishing great uh striped bass fishing and uh look look uh, uh at, at these baits that we have locally we got a lot of baits um, i'm seeing killies i'm sure that uh shrimp are going to start stirring soon there's uh plenty of a uh, peanut bunker out in the harbor and that means larger bunker are going to be moving in so uh nothing but great stuff going on you really should get out there that whole moon theory it really really works have fun out there until next week i bid you all peace tight lines from the Fire Island area in Great South Bay, let's check in with Captain Al Lorenzetti. Fire Island report. I uh, don't have much to report, but flounder season opens this Friday, April 1st. I'm looking forward to it. My boat should be back in the water here any day, so I'm going to give it a few shots and see if we can find the elusive flounder. And uh, maybe some other species that I heard there, some striped bass, some small fish in the creeks on the north side of the bay a few and some up in the state channel as well so you know a little mix of flounder season flounder fishing and a little striped bass fishing to get things going but i'm sure as the weather warms up things are going to heat up too so all looking good on the fishing front we'll talk to you soon matt have a great week take care bye bye with our fly and freshwater report we have paul mccain from river bay outfitters hello matt well here it is I'm hoping for an early spring. It isn't happening. Here we go. The first two days, third, first three days, it's been really cold with a lot of wind. But it's a good time to really explore your areas. And here I am fishing down at one of my areas that I love to come down to and fish. So I'm checking it at the best time, at the real low, low tide, to see if there's anything different that changed, if there's a different uh, structure and all that. But it's good to even get out. Now, I have to tell you, thanks, Matt. I have to tell you, we were really excited about the Fly Fishing Expo of Long Island. You did a fabulous job. I heard nothing but good, good things about your presentation on the warm water fishing here on Long Island. Uh, it was terrific, terrific job. And mark it on your calendars. We're doing it again next March. March 26th, 25th, Saturday, March 25th, 2023. We're going to be coming back at the Long Island Fly Fishing Expo of Long Island. Can't wait. It's going to be a good time. Okay, the reports. I did hear of a few fish being caught over in Jamaica Bay. Even a few that are coming in slowly. Uh, basically, it's more like there's no fishing effort because the weather has been so miserable in the last few days. As far as trout fishing goes, well, everybody's been catching fish. Uh, a week ago, the fly rodders had their Monday out at the Connect Quad, and everybody said how they had a good time, they caught fish. Uh, even Don, who had five fish that day. Well, so it, it should be, a, you know, it's been a good year so far, but it's only going to get better. If it warms up, these mud flax are going to warm up, 
<laughs> and we're gonna have uh, stripers in the back bay here and I'll be here shoo soon very soon we're gonna be running trips here so until next time tie lines everybody Raul Ortiz the urban angler checks in Raul uh, fishing has been good here in the city and um, we've been catching fish anywhere from the 20 inch to 40 inch range I did hear of some bigger fish, anywhere from 15 to 20 pounds being caught, which is a good thing. Great start to the season. Uh, we got opening day coming up April 1st, north of the GW, and we should have another 15 days for uh, opening day uh, here in the city for the five boroughs. Uh, I'm sure some of you probably didn't make it out with this cold snap. But uh, if you went out there in this cold snap, uh, was probably you probably had a good time because there are fish there waiting. Um, well, we got the new moon phase coming up also. Fish, bigger fish should be on their way in any day now and um, it should just get better from here on out. Uh, all I can say is a great start to this early season. Um, if you like, give me a follow on um, Instagram. My name's Raul Ortiz, um, and I've been fishing with my buddies Gilbert and Frankie. You can check them out also. Peter Fish in New York, and New York Frank Fish. Uh, check us out if you like and a follow, and stay tuned for more reports in the future. If you would like to be a part of our weekly video fishing forecast, we are looking for social media savvy anglers for hyperlocal reporting from around the New York metro and Long Island area. If you would like to be a part of our weekly video fishing forecast, we are looking for social media savvy anglers for hyperlocal reporting from around the New York metro and Long Island area. So if you're a captain, tackle shop, or just an avid angler, contact Tim at LABayRat at gmail.com. Remember to like our video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and tap on the bell to be notified instantly when we post a new video on YouTube. And of course, to be a subscriber to the Fisherman Magazine to part of the Dreamboat Contest and Coastal Kayak Clash. Check out this video's description on YouTube for all the related links and index for specific reports. Please remember to support our correspondents by visiting their websites and social media pages. Come down to Belmont Lake on Saturday. I will be there and the fishing should be great with all the most recent stock, trout stockings. See you right here next week at thefisherman.com. Steigercraft boats, built by people who fish our waters. Serious English choose Steigercraft for their 40 years of boat building experience right here in the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic. Visit Steigercraft.com for a dealer near you.